we're going to look at the level structure of the game, not as a line, but as a circle. That's a halo. That's a better halo. You have prepared a presentation of pieces for me about the classic video game Halo Combat Evolved that we both loved uh, back in 2001. It was announced in 1999. It was released in 2001. It was announced at the Macworld Expo. You wouldn't think this is an Apple logo, but it is. It just sucks. But like Steve Jobs or uh, Wozniak, one of them went on stage and presented Halo, and there was footage of Master Chief walking, and they had the iconic oh, 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 oh. Bungie was bought by Microsoft a year later, mm -hmm. so then it became a Xbox game. And if you want to compare logos, I think this is, I mean, Xbox was clearly sipping that monster energy or whatever. That, it was. Is, the, that oh, is the most so 2001 cool. thing I've ever seen in my life. And it's beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. Some of the best iconography I've ever seen. Not oh. using that word correctly. No, but no. Yeah. I mean, it makes me want to surge, and I want to watch, uh, like, I want a bumper sticker of Calvin pissing on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no fear, baby. Well said. Well, this was the first PC game shooter to become a console game. People accredit Halo Combat Evolved with a lot of innovations and inventing things but it's not true it was not the first game to do this the first game to do that what it was was the first game to polish those innovations and combine them into one game co-op on halo was fantastic we take it for granted how good the first halo was on the console for co-op there was co-op in other games there was a lot of issues with the respawn and things you can imagine how annoying that can be whereas the first halo really got it right video game culture from the late 90s early 2000s where there was pc gamers and console gaming was really just becoming a thing as we get into the history section we'll talk a little bit about you know land parties with doom being run on entire campuses or the fact that goldeneye i think really set the stage for people that were my age as sort of like the it wasn't a land party like you were you were split screening four ways you know yeah. To play Golden Eye on the N64, TV. yeah, yep. but like that, I think set. So, so then when we finally got our hands on Halo, we were like, "Oh my god!" One of the big things was the twin stick first person shooter. Halo also had the limited loadout; you could only carry two guns. But the game design was built around running and gunning, picking up what you find. The yeah. guns were qualitatively different. Critics at the time praised Halo for not having the need to find health packs which is ironic when we go back and play the first halo the only halo game with health packs i'm going to go full um actually here for just a moment please do uh odst has health packs you're playing a super soldier your dooms or your fast-paced first person shooters on consoles recharging health we still get the blood o vision in a lot of video games right. now yeah sort of um, war style first level of the game, the Pillar of Autumn, which is the name of the ship. Mm -hmm. read the, uh, I read it, the book. It's the only game I've played that has had the in-universe inverted Y-axis setting. You and I grew up with, a, we had a desktop joystick. We would play the X-Wing uh, games, yep. the TIE Fighter games. So when you pull back on a joystick, you look up. Master Chief, look at these lights. And it like very yep. specifically wants you to establish. Something was wrong with your alignment. We're going to have you run that again. Yeah, it's a lot of yeah, that. That guy. Yep. Yeah, when you when you RoboCop, you know, Ripley cryo sleep your way out of that sleeping tube. It's the, exactly. Which looks really comfy sometimes when I'm sleeping at night and I'm, I'm having trouble falling asleep. I pretend I'm in a gel casket flying through space. Is it weird? Mm -hmm. Is that thing at 45 degrees for a reason? Which one? Like uh, Master Chief's sleeping container. It's like at 45 it to 60 be... degrees. But, now, like, they it did... might be like 45. It might be closer to 60, but he's not. But he was also delivered. He, he sleeps standing up in the Halo 4 trailer or when he's flying in space in Zero G. That's also like, hey, we're rushing the waking up process. I feel like the 45 degree is the perfect, like, 
wake up, but we're not rushing the blood out of your head quite yet. It's, yeah, I mean, I get that you know, vertical se- or horizontal seems trippy, but which is the first level of the first game too, which is great. Does mm-hmm. give you really good game design. Now, people overlook game design the same way they overlook editing in a movie. They say they they go through the tutorial of like this is how you look. You have two joysticks now. You move with this one. You look at this one. Press X to do. Oh, we don't have time for train you with a gun. That's in the, you can watch that on YouTube or replay the game. We don't have time to train you with a gun. You got to run to the bridge now. And on your way running there, you pass allies and they show you the mini map. They're yellow. And they're like, watch out on the left. And your mini map also shows the animal. It's, it's very elementary. Someone who's played a video game before doesn't need it, but you go, oh, those guys over there with the flashy guns and the doors closing on them. Those are the bad guys. There's the show. Don't tell. But again, that's very elementary, but you get there, the captain, Captain Keys. Well, Master Chief, take my firearm, take my sidearm. I'm not going to need it. I'm going. I I 100 percent agree with uh, the show. Don't tell mechanic as somebody who learns and engages with content or literature or anything else the way I do. That's and I'm not alone. Let's just like audiences engage largely better that way. I would argue it's one of the best opening sequences in video game history that seems bold um but there's nothing worse and and i remember i, I don't want to like talk trash on any games but i've played games where it's like you get this sort of like paragraph of like how to use the d-pad and you're like well just not going to use that it, it's the know, windows it's, pop-up of like hey yeah. by the way and you're like you go to a website yeah. like, do you want us to save the password do you want to see how the website change and you're like not now no, but I'm don't not don't that. not ask me again I suppose. No, well, like, yeah. well, I'll just if I can jump and shoot, and if there's a melee button, I'll figure it out. But yeah, it's it was so simple and basic. But it wasn't, and you're right. Like everything about that, from like a not just being a tutorial, but you are immediately understanding this is a crisis. There are enemies. Whoop, 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 they are whoop. they are Sirens. they are uncomfortably bright colors. Um, and yes. I need to get past this firefight. You might even be hit with a plasma bolt on your way through and recognize like oh i'm not dead that's good news um like there's so you you learn so much about you and your world in that first you know minute and a half yeah yeah and they give you the classic narrative like a person fish out of water story the protagonist wakes up from a long sleep or they wake up from a coma whatever it might be and to your point about the bright colors i didn't even it, it, it's easy in video games where there's one side versus the other to have a bright red, bright blue. Uh, we're going to talk about that later. But but the thing is, you don't shoot the Marines. They they blend in with the wall. The big blue guy, the little pink dude, the green guy with a purple shield. Like, shoot those guys. They're bad. bright and shiny. Shoot the bright and shiny. That's video game 101. Excellent silhouettes as well. Like, very easy to identify. Non-human. Enemy. A non-human and enemy types and their role as part of this enemy combat system. So you and I are now going to recollect every level by level of mm-hmm. the first Halo. Halo. I call it Halo. Uh, some people call it Halo Combat Evolved. The f- first level... Some people, call the... it Halo, some people call it Halo 1. Which, which is just, just asinine. Well, this is the same Star Wars argument, and we got to be careful. Yeah. We're treading no, water. Some, you know, some people... Well, some people, uh, the Beatles, call it Hello, Hello. <sighs> you are in a survival pod that crashes. Uh, none of your comrades survive. You can uh-huh. sort of do a stealth mission. You grab your shit. You drive the dune buggy, the warthog, which is originally going to Yeah, but you don't even get that. You don't even get that right away. I mean, you get that in no. the latter parts of the Halo level, like after the first or second uh, kind of sort of like quick save cut point. Um, which again, thoughtful innovations on how they implement quick saves across the levels. Um, well, oh, excellent. The point. first part, like you get out, and there's that moment where you look up for the first time. Oh, and the ring is oh, perspective so of the ring. Yeah. Oh, it's gorgeous, beautiful. And then you, you, you are kind of hoofing it across territory, and you are experimenting with the guns you found at this point and they introduced them to you slowly because you had the you were playing with the guns on the pillar of autumn you pick up a needler and a plasma rifle and a a plasma pistol but here you are you've got that sweet sweet magnum pistol and the assault rifle with all 60 rounds uh which never returns 
and you're able to like yeah and you know this is this is where like the love of the pistol sort of comes from it's i'm so glad you mentioned the pistol it's the one note i didn't mention the pillar of the autumn it's funny that the first time you play the game they give you the pistol limited ammo you think okay i use this till i get a better shiny gun literally Mm -hmm. shiny gun halo is a lore dump it is your first time on the ring ecosystem and this is relevant to the thesis i'll be making later Mm -hmm. the next level the truth and reconciliation which does have some stealth elements i don't feel like i even wanted this stealth it's sure you get the sniper rifle you do open the game with the sniper rifle and with the like the dark vision um night vision scope and you're taking out other snipers and patrols and grunts on the giant you know okay i mean you're probably right i just don't feel like like you start that a little stealthy but i feel that it's more from a cinematic element than it is a gameplay element to really stealth you do land with the odst and and, and the first shot goes off and it's all then it's just halo again now it's worth mentioning that the truth and reconciliation is an irl reference to something that happens in the real world truth and reconciliation or truth and justice initiatives are international committees about figuring out what happened what happened happened digging for truth of what happened on battlefields what happened during war someone was doing their research on the writing team and came across that and thought it'd be a good reference silent cartographer another lore dump where you're on halo you have a warthog didn't mention earlier about one of the compliments of the gameplay was again not the first game to have first person shooting and then you jump in a vehicle but was the first one to get heavily praised for the balance of the use of vehicles i also believe science cartographer is the first level with hunters the first sort of boss enemy I believe you are correct you go up to the top of that hill after you drive around and you yeah. and, then, and then as is the case with us we learn what the word cartographer means um and then you <laughs> You uh, you go up to the top of the hill where there's like the, the Cortana's like there's hunters too, and you're like what is what is going on? And then you're like this thing is a giant monster. And then also because it's 2002 or three, and you're in a buddy's dorm room, some other guy's like, yeah, you gotta shoot him in the small of the back. And you're like, yeah. oh okay, you know. But like that's how you learn that stuff. Like I don't remember yeah, the game uh, telling me that. Be clear, shoot him in the orange flowy part. That's kind of it, the rule. You know, it's, it's a it's a video game. Shoot shoot the big shiny part. Now I will say that. There are critics of the game, and they were like, well, the, the pistol's overpowered. And I think there's some balance issues, potentially, but at the same time, what is one of the things people love when they talk about the first Halo game? The pistol. The pistol. Right? Like, why? Because yeah, it was fun. Just give them a good weapon and let them have a ball. Like, people loved it. All the guns um, are incredible. There's not a bad gun in the game. Assault on the control room is a snowy mission. You have that pyramid thing at the end. It's there. You have yeah, the banshees yeah. flying in. Great mm-hmm. level, mm-hmm. linear, but fantastic. Uh, this is important. <laughs> the level name three four three guilty spark. Son of a bitch. Chief gets dropped in to a swamp. <laughs> Reading redditors' comments, fans love the fact that when you enter the level, your mini map shows a lot of yellow around you. Those are literal flood infected Marines. Right. Your computer hasn't detected it yet. So you descend to the depths and then you come back up. What happens right before the lowest point of that descent? Jenkins. The helmet of Jenkins? Quite right before that, there's a living Marine who's kind of gone mad and he shoots at you and he's 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 sputtering. And it's it's a Marine who's suffering from severe PTSD. Like, don't go past this. Uh, I'm going crazy. He's talking about the flood. Uh, I, I want to be clear that the game does have a lot of fantastic details. People have pointed out one of the levels in the first Halo. There are Marines and Covenant soldiers on high ground who died together, surrounded by dead flood. And it shows it's the flood got the name from the developers and the game testers because they naturally sought high ground so you reach the bottom of this pit in a swampy dark forest of guilty spark you get revealed the flood and you start heading back up 
my friend. Oh, blood is the low point. Yeah, that's a that's a very interesting sort of artistic choice. Yeah. Now, using some nomenclature from scientific entropy, we're going to get red is forward, blue is backwards. Now, this is important to realize. This three four three guilty spark is the inflection point for the narrative, but not for the player for the first time. The player for the first time still thinks they're on the up and up when they go to the library. Upon a replay, they'll realize three four three is the guilty spark is the inflection point. You go to the library where you meet three four three guilty spark, who sounds like come this way, reclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I didn't know they would reroute the cables this way. <laughs> yeah, that guy. Yeah, not the first mission to have a shotgun, but the first one was like, "Here's the shotgun." You are now playing an ammo con conservation game with the zombies, the space zombies. But you are oh, still on. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, the, a level that is ruined by the ambiance of the anniversary versus the original. Original is much darker, spookier. Uh, the music dwells when it needs to it swells when it needs to excuse me it might be a little harsh to say anniversary ruins it because bluntly what they've done is they meaningfully polished that level to and match anniversary the the is yeah. being played by people most of the time who've played halo combat evolved on the original xbox well said um, and so i don't think it's ruined in fact i had a lot of fun replaying it I did notice it was brighter and I could see things and like that wasn't terrible. I think I ruined, played, you're right. It's the wrong I played word. I'm I'm an adult man. I play video games during the day now. I can't stay up past nine o'clock. I'm gonna die. So um I don't think it was that bad, but I do I didn't have the same experience because the first time I played it, it was dark in the level. It was dark outside. My living room lights were off. I probably had headphones on, so I didn't wake up a roommate. And I was... And you have no idea when this level is going to end. Yeah. It just... You think the next room, the next zombie, the next shotgun shell, the Sentinels coming to help you and they get destroyed. And like that experience in the library, that slog the first time is, is terrifying. It's a marathon, not a sprint, but you thought it was a sprint and it just keeps going. Yeah, that's a well said. Marathon, not a sprint, but you thought it was a sprint. So you started playing it that way and then you're going to go, ooh. Um, and then, real quick, on the Guilty Spark turning point, the inflection point on the level 343 yeah. Guilty Spark, you go down through the tunnel, you put on the, the other Marine's helmet or you watch the video feed, you see some of what happened before it turns into a freaking zombie game halfway through yeah um i almost turned it off i was like i can't handle this <laughs> um so the library was a big lore dump let's talk about why that works so well uh, the library lore dump works so well because you're being given information while you're playing the game and you're giving giving it in digestible sized chunks and you're you're listening for guilty spark because you want to get out of this room so what he says in two and three sentence chunks you are hanging on to you're not being forced to sit through a cutscene or read text on screen even some of my favorite video games that came out before this sort of duke nukem having weird text or not even being sure what the plot is or like you awaken your home with candle keep I'm like thanks Baldur's Gate. but this is very much like yes it's tell you but it's tell you why you're playing and it's something that's very well replicated when you get to bioshock in 2007 mm. and, and they get a lot of credit for that which is executed well also but like the game gives you story while you're still in action it's efficient storytelling but also immersive experience two betrayals is the first level to be completely mirrored since the halfway point of 343 guilty spark two betrayals is the mirror image of assault on the control room we're now you're using your shields to burst the uh, waypoints of that yep. pyramid. And you're now there's arrows on the floor like IKEA. You're not using. You're now using them backwards. It's literally retreading your steps. But keys, where you're like, oh. hey, I'm actually going to go save Captain Keys on the Truth and Reconciliation. But the Truth and Reconciliation has now been swarmed by the flood. So now you're in this perverse version of reality after you reach the bottom of Guilty Spark. 
where well, you ran I, into someone with people. Is there, is it all a dream? Did you know, it's something happened and I snap, but I, I mean, narratively, but I just want to make the, the viewer aware that's what's happening as you backed your way out. Well, and you've, you've been trained on a particular combat style through the library and two betrayals, uh, about dealing with two different enemy types at once, or two different factions at once, I should say. And through the library, the Sentinels are helping you, so you're keeping an eye on it. Now you're not fighting one enemy section, right? Like, the first half of the game, you're fighting the Covenant, period. For the first half of the game, more than first half of I'm fighting the Covenant, but the way the library's laid out is you have to now start back, like running backwards, facing forward, zombie game. It completely Correct. changes the element. To your point, uh, trails, now you're fighting three different factions of enemies. Take everything you learned and use that toolkit to problem solve these different enemy types that have drastically different play and combat styles. And that takes a game that could have been fun but stale and keeps it wildly fresh. But how you're approaching combat is different. Now, I think it's more of a stealth game than ever before. Like, yeah, you learned a little bit about stealth in the truce and reconciliation level. But now, inversely, in keys, you have to apply it. Like, yeah, you learned it to fight one guy. But now, stealth means a couple things. You can snipe and wait. Or you can watch the Covenant and the Flood and the Sentinels fight each other. Or you can be a force of chaos and jump into the fray because they're engaging with each other and you, and you can just be in the middle of this thing. Your grenades are most effective when there's lots of enemies on the field. So the, the gameplay loop, which is like throw a grenade, mop up enemies. It's almost a tutorial for the end of the game. Here's, yes. three, here's three factions at once. Better get good it at is it. The, that's a really good point. It's, you you said it best when it came to you. It was set up at the beginning of the game. Now the payoff is now, right? You, you, uh, two betrayals is a big long mission, and you got to run through something. And enemies storm the door right as your shields hit zero because you had to use your capacitor to shut down a thing, yeah. right? So, but you've seen the map before, and that's to your point about keys, and that leads us, of course, to the mall. Oh yeah. Which is so we've gone. I would say full circle. We've really only gone about 180 degrees. We've gone half circle. Uh, the mall. You go back to the pillar of autumn and you say, "I'm going to react. I'm going to met set their nuclear reactor of this ship and detonate the ring." We, of course, because the plot that we skipped over is that the ring is a giant weapon and let's destroy it. But we're back where we started, and you're traveling the same halls. And little cubby ways and crouching and maybe using your flashlight through the pillar of autumn. So the mall is you're ending where you started. You are finishing Beautiful. it at the beginning. So romantic. And I've pointed out this visual that the game really does reach a point and then you start backtracking. Is it a metaphor for grief, PTSD, soldiers coming home, and what they saw based on Master Chief saw the helmet of the guy and then everything went backwards at that point maybe is it everything a circle it's literally on a halo there's at the end of the day it's a video game about killing aliens and your big spaceman but if you apply that narrative to it it makes it a little bit more interesting uh, when you first explained to me that the halo level design creates a halo because you do the same levels in reverse i th thought that was super neat yeah. Um, like, uh, I hadn't thought about that before. No I one never has. thought about. It. I googled it. Maybe one or two people mention it. Most critics said it was boring level design. They were used to more qualitative gaming. This game said, "Well, we have some of that, but we're offering a different narrative. It is efficient for our developers." This game did create boring shooters. It did create a certain niche for shooters on consoles that miss the qualitative single person campaign and that can be discussed forever and everyone has what about the warthog for a second the physics on that thing are nuts it is so much fun to drive i don't know how successfully the xbox would have launched without halo no it was a lot a of groundbreaking for the console groundbreaking for the xbox it created a genre 
it, again, it's not the first, didn't create the genre, but it stapled itself to the genre. After Doom, any other game that came out wasn't called a first-person shooter. That title didn't exist. It was called a Doom clone. So yeah. after your Duke Nukem was a Doom clone. Quake was a Doom clone, right? And that was sort of the name. And Doom wasn't even the first first-person shooter, but it right. was right um the but one who made it it's a the monument. one that broke through the, a lot of the ways halo did and the term first person shooter doesn't really come about until uh two games come out half-life 2 mm -hmm. and halo combat evolved beyond the ring uh subtitle shmub title don't know if you know this bungie was not a fan of combat evolved of course the money people in the market here said we should put combat evolved to make it a little bit more clear the menu screen didn't have Halo. Halo was not on the side of the Xbox game. It was on the front with Halo Combat Evolved, but it was not on the side of the game. The soundtrack is called the Halo soundtrack. I was confused going up when people called it Halo Combat Evolved. I was like, is that the expansion? Like, what is that? No. Right. Uh, Machinima is the use of real-time computer graphic engines to create a cinema cinematic... Oh, boy cinematic production because machinima after all is machine plus cinema look at the name this mm. term was originally used for the engines they used in the late 80s early 90s to make video game videos for demo cds and demo discs but speed runs and multiplayer matches that were recorded were technically machinima that was the genre created for i'm um, now we call them playthroughs now youtube has an entire subset of video game machinima even though that name belongs to a specific youtube channel but what happened was uh there was doom movies there was uh quake movies or there was doom movies with the added narrative that maybe the players were adding with their voices on the mics with multiplayer matches so again halo was not the first but of course machinima got popularized with things like red versus blue very popular with halo uh, mm. One of my favorite quotes from the show, time, line. Time isn't made out of lines. It is made out of circles. That is why clocks are round. From my favorite character, Caboose, from the blue team, uh, a little bit more meat to put on my Halo thesis, if you will. That's beautiful. That That's a good... No, well, it's there. It's that's a line. Martin O'Donnell recruited Salvatore and three other colleagues who he'd worked with with Jingles and recorded the classic halo theme which was inspired by yesterday we mentioned the beatles earlier yep <laughs> i wonder if it's some of those note progressions i can hear it and premiered it at the mac world 1999 that we talked about earlier one of the reason the halo level designs are so big and so open is it was built originally as an rts game um and then when you zoomed in to be just a single character in that world the maps were sprawling it's like how do we use this asset that already exists we are yeah. now shifting gears and it did, yeah it's a very big I, it's a, game for a first person shooter at the time it very much i was on um uh the cosmic geppetto podcast uh a few months ago and the whole episode was about innovation from desperation using the resources you have to deliver quality creative content and it's stuff like you know carry out boxes glued to the wall in the aliens movie right and just spray painted gray because james cameron was out of money um yeah. or the fact that they like made mystery science theater in their garage with like puppets or the fact that the shark didn't work in jaws and they're like let's just not show it music's not playing the entire time play the original halo then play halo 2 anniversary and it's night and day the amount of music there is because the first game was pseudo a horror game it was a pseudo experience this game they were given the direction of describe an ancient world halo it's finished no i think we're just getting started i think this show is called level by level i think it is